Hello IP4, welcome to our first video lesson. So as you know, we're not going to be able to go into school for the next few weeks, and so we are going to be continuing our current English chapter with these video lessons. So this is a little bit different to the video lessons that we did during the summer, because those lessons, they were reviewing what you did last year, but now we are continuing with the work that we have already started this chapter. So the content that we're going to learn in these videos is stuff that will be on your midterm exam, if we are able to do them, or they will be on your final exam. So these videos are important. It's important that you watch each of these videos, that you listen carefully, and I would suggest that you make notes as well. If you don't want to make notes, that's okay, because I will be putting the PowerPoint presentation that we're about to do onto the e-learning platform, so you can read that at your own pace. But it's very important that you stay on top of our video lessons, that you watch the videos carefully, and that you remember what we've learned during them. Because these video lessons are replacing the work that we would have done in class. And so we're not going to do this stuff again. We're only going to do it on the video. And we're not going to do it when we get back to school. So, because we started English Chapter 5, Capitalization and Punctuation, right before Christmas and right before we stopped coming to school, what I've decided to do... During this lesson, we're going to recap what we did in our first two or three lessons before we had to come home. So this lesson is going to be stuff that you've seen before, but our next few lessons will be things that you haven't yet done. Okay, so lesson one of chapter five, capitalization and punctuation, is a recap of what we did before we all went home. So this lesson is going to be recapping capitalization and M marks. So we already know all of this, but we're going to go through it again quickly. So we know that all sentences need to start with a capital letter, and they need to end with an N mark. So either a full stop, a question mark, or an exclamation point. We need to add capital letters and M marks if we ever see a run-on sentence, so that we can separate it into two separate correct sentences. So we've got here, can we go to the park, I am bored? We've got two subjects and two predicates. And as you know, there should just be one subject and predicate in those sentences. So we correct it by adding a question mark after park, and we capitalize I for the start of the new sentence. So, can we go to the park? I am bored. So, statements begin with a capital letter and end with a full stop. And you already know that statements give information. So, an example, an eager beaver built a dam. So, we start the sentence with a capital letter and with a full stop. Questions begin with a capital letter and end with a question mark. And questions ask for information. So here's an example. Where did you leave your backpack? We start with capital W and we end with a question mark. Commands begin with a capital letter and end with a full stop. And they tell someone to do something. So if I say, bring me your homework, I am telling you what I want you to do. We start that with a capital letter and end with a full stop. And exclamations begin with a capital letter and end with an exclamation point. And as you know, exclamations show strong feeling. So if you're really happy, if you're really excited, if you're scared, if you're angry, if you love something, if you hate something, we use exclamations. So if you've just been to the cinema and you really enjoyed the movie, you might say, that movie was amazing. That is a strong feeling. Begins with a capital letter, ends with exclamation points. 
So as well as capitalizing the beginning of a sentence, we also know that we need to capitalize proper nouns. So proper nouns name people, pets, places, and many types of things. So my name is Joe. My name is Joe. So we have a capital letter on my name. My dog's name is Poppy. So again, pets, you name them with a proper noun, capital P for Poppy. You don't capitalize D for dog because that's the type of animal, but you do capitalize the name of the pet. I am from England. England is a country, it's a place, so we capitalize that with a capital E. My birthday is in May. So that is the name of a month, and we capitalize the names of months, days of the week, and many, many other things. So, we talked already about needing to capitalize names. And when you capitalize a person's name, you need to capitalize all of the names. So first name, middle name, surname. You also need to capitalize any titles that are being used, and initials. An initial is when, instead of writing someone's full name, you just use the first letter of that name. So. My name is Mr. Joseph Bradley Armstrong. You have the title, Mr. needs capital M. My first name, Joseph, needs capital J. My middle name, Bradley, uses capital B. And my surname, Armstrong, uses capital A. Now, you probably know the author, J.K. Rowling, who wrote Harry Potter, she doesn't use her full name, Joanne. She uses initials, J, and then K for her middle name. And then, of course, we capitalize R for Rowling as well. Dr. Claire Jones, again, we've got capital D for Doctor, capital C for Claire, capital J for Jones, Miss Fiona Bruce, capital M, capital F, capital B. So you also know that we can use family names in place of a person's name. Now sometimes we use family names in place of a name, sometimes we use family names just to describe the relationship we have with them. So it's important that you only capitalize a family name when it's being used as part of a person's name or in place of a name. So we've got two sentences here. Dad went to the mall with Uncle Jack and Grandpa. We're using Dad as a name, Uncle Jack as a name, and Grandpa as a name. But my mum and aunt stayed at home with my grandma. I've not actually used these family names in place of a name. I've just used them to state the relationship I have with them. I've not used those words as names, so they do not need to be capitalized. Now as well, we need to think about how to capitalize titles. So when I say titles, I mean the names of books, movies, songs, TV shows, video games, and lots of other things. They are proper nouns. Now when you write titles or other proper nouns, you only capitalize the important words. You don't capitalize less important connecting words like the, and, in, of, to, or a, unless they are the first word or the last word in a title. And when you write the name of a book or a song or a TV show or whatever, usually you would write it in italics. So italics are these words that are slanted a little bit like this. Now you would do that if you were typing on a computer, Obviously, when you are writing, I cannot expect you to write in italics. So we're going to forget about that. If I ever give you a piece of work to do where you have to capitalize a proper noun that's the name of something, I won't ask you to do it in italics. All you need to do is capitalize. So here we've got the name of a book, The Frog and the Prince. We capitalize the here because it's at the very first word in the title but we don't capitalize the here. So and and the are not capitalized. The important words frog and prince are capitalized. And we capitalize the because it's the start of the title. Another book, 
Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. We've got the important words, Harry Potter Chamber Secrets, capitalized, but we don't capitalize and, the, or of. The movie, Avengers Endgame, capital A, capital E, you need to capitalize both parts of the name, and the video game, Minecraft, again, capital M. Okay, IP4, that is the end of our first lesson. But before I finish the video, I just want to explain your homework worksheet to you. Okay, IP4, so you should have this worksheet. It says IP4 English Chapter 5, Capitalization and Punctuation. Lesson 1, Capitalization and M Marks Recap Worksheet. So it says, fix the sentences below by rewriting them with the correct capital letters and M marks. So you can see number one, would you like to watch a movie? And you can see that there's two things missing in that sentence. So I want you to write the sentence again and make sure that you add any missing capital letters or M marks. Now, if you do not have a printer at home, that's okay. You can just write these sentences on any piece of paper you have. So don't worry if you can't print this. I just want you to write the sentences somewhere, again, with the correct capital letters and M marks. So you can see number one has got two things missing, so there's number two. Then number four has got four things missing. Number six has got four things missing. Number eight's got five things missing. So make sure you add any missing capital letters and M marks. There may be some run-on sentences as well, so watch out for those. Okay, IP4, that is now the end of our lesson. So that was just a recap of what we'd already done in class over the last week or so before we had Christmas. But our next lesson is going to be moving on to a new topic, commas. So make sure you have your English workbook and your English textbook for that lesson. Your homework today was just to do the worksheet, but next time we'll be using the textbook and the workbook during the lesson. So please make sure when you watch the next video that you have your textbook and workbook ready with you. Make sure you finish that homework worksheet as well before you watch the next lesson because at the beginning of the next video I will tell you the answers to that homework worksheet. But for now that is all we need to do so thank you IP4. Bye bye.